it's sad that people can't argue anymore without it being some sort of offense or affront to to somebody else. Yeah, I that okay, that is sort of how I discovered. I'm like, I don't get this. You disagree, but then you want to take someone out or hurt or ruin someone's life because there's a disagreement about a movie or a franchise, you know? Like, and I also appreciate like watching the stuff like this He-Man thing that came up with Kevin is like, dude, and he, this is why I think I was talking about this on Midnight's Edge. I just want to reiterate, this thing hits home because Kevin was, I feel like everyone that's a geek and a nerd, especially if you've seen Kevin at, at Comic-Con or in his speaking engagements or whatnot, like he is one of us, right? He's a legit like nerd. So the fact that like he like kind of got turned by like Hollywood to do this thing and kind of like, I, 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 it's, it's really disheartening to see that. Like, it's, it's like, you mean him of all people? Like we expect it from JJ Abrams. I never yeah. want to see anything JJ Abrams touches again. I can't stand that guy. Uh, he's yeah. a hack. He's exposed. Um, I, th I think he's just this whole mystery box thing. We know is bullshit. The fact that he lied about Khan for Star Trek Into Darkness was was bullshit. Um, just complete lack of understanding of what makes Star Trek and Star Wars, you know, relevant and what its core elements and and how it's missing. You know, he doesn't get that. Um, is sickening to me. So so this thing that happened with Kevin, I just think it really hits people hard. Also, I don't get, I'm like, I'm not a He-Man fan, so I really don't care. Like, I'm like, uh, I'm not a fan of that show. I get like, Tom is like broken up about it. Um, yeah. But I'm like, I, you know, I wasn't a He-Man fan. I'm like, that was a cartoon to sell toys. I was more of a Filmation Flash Gordon fan because all the chicks on that show were super hot. That was my thing on that, that cartoon show. The Flash Gordon one was good. Yeah. And I think the the He Man thing is blowing up for for a lot of people, and yeah. a, a lot of them. And I'm, I myself have been very open about it that I'm, I'm not the biggest He Man Master Universe fan. I watched reruns when I was at my babysitters, right? Like, so I, I remember that, but it's not like I have a ton of nostalgia over it. I wasn't out there buying toys. I had Ninja Turtles. I didn't have He Man stuff. Right. Um, but for me, it, it just it goes along the same lines as so many other things we've seen in Hollywood. And you said it just right for for Kevin Smith, the guy who has this reputation of being being the guy, the nerd, the geek uh, who's into all this stuff. And listen, he, he's written comic books before, written great runs and respected runs on right. comic books before. But there comes a point where you become the dude who is posting himself in tears, selfie tears after everything you watch, after Captain Marvel, after The Last Jedi, The Rise of Skywalker, uh, WandaVision, like every, everything. And I feel like you lose your authenticity. Uh, so not only do you have this struggle of losing your authenticity, but then you go out and you... You lie. Now, he's not going to define it as a lie. I think everyone can define it however they want to. He right. was clearly misleading people uh, intentionally. And then as someone who is one of us, right, or like how we right. felt was one of us, you would think that he's been upset about something before, that he's been upset about one of his properties before, that he would understand that reaction. But then to continue to kind of poke the bear and troll and do a live stream while you disable your chat and say, we're not bothered by it, but then spend 45 minutes talking about it. Those are the kind of things that just continue to pour gasoline on the fire. And that's that really is why this is happening. Not because of a bad show. It's because right. of all right. the ancillary stuff. Well, and full disclosure, like I know Kevin, right? Like I've known yeah. him since the 90s. He used to read my magazine and we put him on the cover of the magazine when Mallrats came out. And I'm like friends with uh, Malcolm Ingram, who was, he he did stuff for Film Threat back in the day. We met at this film festival. He ended up becoming Kevin Smith's bodyguard. And then he has a really interesting story. He became Kevin Smith's bodyguard. He was the kind of guy where we would go to bars, like, uh, you know, in San Diego. There's a really great dive bar. I know where all the good dive bars are. Uh, the Tivoli in San Diego is one that's one of my favorites. That's all, that's always a great place to hang out. We would go and hang out with Malcolm and he would like, I was like, dude, like, I know you're angry. I know you're pissed off. And he, we would like have to like stop him from getting in some bar fight with someone. It's like, dude, like, let's chill. Let's get a beer. That guy that looked at you wrong 
don't you know guys like that? I know you know guys like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I sometimes I have been a guy like that, just kind of depends. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some people are, are di- yeah. whatever. So so then years later comes out, he makes this movie called Small Town Gay Bar, and he's like, dude, I just love dick. I'm gay, but he's not <laughs> like he's he's not. And, uh, dude, this guy is huge. Like he's huge and intimidating and big. And Kevin talks about him um, in some of his spoken word stuff, but like. So Malcolm came out as gay and I'm just like, he, it was like the, all the hate just kind of melted off. It's like, dude, I like Dick. I'm just not, he's the least effeminate guy you'd ever meet. You know, he, but he's, he's just like, I'm just, I'm gay, man. Um, and, and so Malcolm's made a bunch of documentaries. He's got a documentary coming out about Kevin Smith that took him 10 years to make wow. because for a couple of those years, Kevin and he didn't talk, but this is what surprises me about it. Like knowing Kevin, like one, I'll tell you, he's, he's very thin skinned. So whenever like film threat would give like even like a mixed review, he like tracked down my home phone number. This is in the nineties before social media or maybe early two thousands. And he called me up at home to like have a discussion about the review. And I'm like, dude, it's just like the film threat. Like we're this tiny little website. We're not even in print anymore. But like, so I, I feel bad that he is like, he can't like, I feel like you learn to roll with the punches. Look at the shit that you take in whether it's like on social media, whatever, you take a lot of shit. You got to develop like rhino skin to be like in public. You'd think by this point, Kevin would have got would have gotten it. But I feel like when it comes to like the fans, I, and that's why it's surprising coming from him, right? Like you think that he of all people would kind of know like, you know, I shouldn't have misled I or like whatever. Not like he has to apologize, but at least like have some understanding. And the trolling is just like, and Gary talks about it all the time, right. On, on, you know, just his own channel, like the, when you go after fans, like that's not a, that's not a winning strategy, right. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it just never, ever works. So I'm just surprised like Kevin of all people, like, dude, you're, you're, you're Kevin fucking Smith. Like, why are you doing it? It's kind of heartbreaking to watch. And, and I think we sometimes by, by we, I just mean in general, People are like, oh, Disney owes this person an apology. You know, that, that stuff's not realistic. That never happened. Yeah. But and I don't think that Kevin uh, should maybe apologize to Clownfish for real for putting them on blast a couple of times. Yeah, I do think an apology is necessary there. As far as to the fans, I think that all that he really needed to say was, listen, I thought we had a great story and we still have more of the story to go, but it's clear that it hasn't resonated with everybody. Uh, I hope you guys stick around. I think you're really going to love what we have coming up next, but you know, I shouldn't have misled people. I just wanted to keep our story safe. That's really it. It doesn't need to be some fucking groveling thing. He just needs to acknowledge that what people are feeling is real. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing. When you just get, when you get laughed out, Netflix said they're paying me anyway. It doesn't matter really coming from you to say that a guy who like made his reputation the way he did. And then the, the tweet that he put out where he's just like kicking up his never before worn Skeletor Pumas and tagging four different corporate entities. It's like, you're, you just lost that credibility that, that you built yourself on. I do think that there's becoming like, you know, just two very distinctly different media right now. It's it's corporate and factory filmmaking, which is, you know, all of these, all of this intellectual property, this IP being grabbed up from Star Trek to Star Wars to you name it, you know, and then there's indie, which I think has a future, right? Like there's, there's a future in that. But I think the other gut punch, other, you know, aside from Kevin is you're doing a show called He-Man, right? He-Man is supposed to be the star of Masters of the Universe, Motu, right? Like, like, and and this is what bothers me as a father, you know, to a son, what media is there for young boys to learn about what it likes, what it's, what it is to be a man, right? Like, like, and I, who is in this corporate boardroom going, okay, we're going to take all these franchises that are popular with boys and we're going to make them for girls. Who who wants that? All, and also, conversely, like, is anyone sitting around the boardroom going, you know what, Barbies? Can we do Barbies for guys? Exactly. Barbies for boys. Like, 
who is like who is making these decisions at the top? And that's where it gets me. Where did someone come to Kevin with like here's the story outlines? You write this, but we've already predetermined. And who is it? It's it's come up so often, and I feel stupid for not noticing it sooner. That's why it's like I feel like I've had blind spots, and it was like maybe 2018. I kind of had this like awakening. Like that's when I discovered like geeks and gamers and Jeremy from the quartering and and uh, you know uh, Gary. Beekler, you know, neurotic and just like all that, like sort of like, like there's something going on. There's clearly some, some ulterior motive or something. I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all. Right. But when you yeah. see it happen so often, it's like, is Hollywood this lazy that they're like, well, that's the storyline. We're just going to like make it for then. Then what is it? If you're a, a father to a young, to young son, what are you showing your kid? Are you, are you showing your kid, say eight, nine years old, you watch the original trilogy, right? And right after Jedi, you're like, no, 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 we don't need to watch the next one. Just, 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 stop. Sit with that, just stop. Sit with that good feeling that you have right now. You just got done watching a clip from my interview that I did with Film Threats Chris Gore, where we talked about so many of the problems that current day Hollywood is struggling with right now. If you want to watch the interview in its entirety, you can go over to RK Outpost Live. I will put a link in the pinned comment below to that video where we talk about so many things. I really think you'll enjoy it. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. Smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching everyone, and a huge shout out to my patrons, I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.